What's going on everybody and welcome back to Off The Shelves. If you're new to this channel or new to this video series, this is basically my monthly Blu-ray and DVD update video. I'll tell you about all the Blu-rays and DVDs, mostly Blu-rays that I went out and bought, give you my quick little reviews on them and tell you whether you should go out and buy it, wait for it to drop on Netflix or skip it entirely. Now this is actually the first one that I've done since November, I think. December, January, February kind of got away from me. So it's a decent sized video. I got quite a few Blu-rays to talk about. I'm going to start off with TV series, Boy Meets World, the complete series. Now, I grew up in the 90s, so this was a really important show to me. Um, sometimes when I edit, I like to watch old sitcoms just because they're easy to kind of have on the background. You can kind of half watch them and still enjoy them. So I used to watch like King of Queens, got through that whole series, bought this because I loved this show back in the day, got through like the first three seasons, loving going back through this. So this is a go out and buy it, especially if you're a... Uh, fan of this TV series. This was like 30 bucks on eBay, so that's a damn good deal. Got that. Put this upside down. Haven't had a chance to watch this yet, but I heard everybody talking so many amazing things about it, so I bought it so me and uh, Holly could watch it, and that is Big Little Lies. Don't have a rating for it, obviously, because I haven't seen it. Put your rating down below what you think of Big Little Lies if you have seen it. Another one that I haven't seen, which is going to get me shot in the comment section, Game of Thrones Season 7. I've bought every single season of Game of Thrones. I think I'm through Season 4. Um, I'm behind, obviously. So I bought this one, and very cool cover art. I think this is the precursor to the final season. So whatever comes out of the eighth season is supposed to be the final season. So looking forward to checking that one out. Bought these for my kids, just for nostalgia's sake for myself as well. The first, I think... Two seasons of the Flintstones and the first two seasons of the classic Scooby-Doo. So, again, I grew up in the 90s. Hanna-Barbera was my shit. So I bought this just to kind of educate my kids on the real stuff, the real cartoons. Now we're going to move into some older movies that I've rebought, either on new editions or, uh, well, actually not rebought necessarily. These are all older movies that I've either rebought a new edition like Shout Factory or older movies that I bought for the first time. So you've got... The Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. I bought this because I want to do a Rob Zombie review series sometime this year. Um, I've made it very vocal. I don't like hardly any of his movies. I'm Strangely, I'm one of the only people that loves Halloween 2, though. So, <laughs> it's kind of strange. But anyway, I bought these two because everybody seems to love these, even though I thought they were garbage when I first watched them. So, I just want to see if watching them now, now that it's been, like... 13 years, whether or not this actually kind of change a little bit. My perspective has changed, so. Have no rating for this. <laughs> My old school rating would have been, fuck this, but, uh, fuck those movies. But, uh, like I said, I need to watch them, because I don't remember much about them. Shout Factory release of Drag Me to Hell. Now, I remember this movie being really fun, but this is actually a really damn good horror movie. Uh, I bought this because I loved... I love Shout Factory, so pretty much anything that I'm familiar with that I would like to add to my collection, if they have a special edition, I always buy it. This is a go out and buy it, because not only is this a really fun and funny horror movie, but it's actually damn scary. Like, there's some really effective jump scares, there's some creepy stuff, a really good ending. This is a very fun Sam Raimi, Evil Dead style, but not quite to that level of goofiness horror movie. So definitely go out and buy this one. Buy the Shout Factory one, because it's awesome. The Exorcist. People are probably going to be shocked that I don't already have this in my collection, but I did not. So I bought this one. This is actually a foreign Blu-ray because the American version was expensive as shit. And this has multiple versions. This has the extended director's cut and the theatrical version. So I haven't seen this movie in years. I've never been the per one of the people that love The Exorcist and put it as like top five movies of all time. I saw it when I was young. I thought it was okay. So I need to watch it as an adult and see if I can join that camp. So The Exorcist, need to rewatch it. Don't have a rating for it. Those of you that have been paying attention to my channel, you know I got this damn thing, the Friday the 13th collection with the most horrible cover art I've ever seen in my life. It's not even the complete collection. This thing, this is what drives me nuts, okay? I know there's rights issues and everything, but why go through the trouble of putting a Blu-ray collection out if you're gonna leave off three of the movies? That's just annoying. So, the collection itself, for the price, I think it was like $22, $23, definitely a go out and buy it. It's absolutely worth it for eight Friday the 13th movies. I mean, that's like two or three bucks a movie, so. That is a damn good deal, and you've seen my reviews so far for the first five, and you'll see my reviews for the later ones, so I'm not going to spoil my reviews and my ratings, but as a set, this is definitely a go out and buy it. Judgment Night. This is a German release that I didn't even know about until my dad bought it and flaunted it in front of me. Look what I got, and I've always loved this movie. I got the poster of it. I mean, this is just one of those really 
awesome 90s thrillers. Basically, you got Dennis Leary playing a badass villain. They murder somebody in the bad part of town. All these guys see it, and they're on the run for the rest of the night trying to save their own lives. So this is a go-out-and-buy-it movie. This is a badass 90s thriller. Still holds up. Just one of my favorite movies, honestly. So it's kind of an expensive Blu-ray if you're going to get the foreign ones. So definitely check it out somewhere else if you haven't seen it before, but it's worth it. Manhunter. Now this is a movie that I've actually never seen the whole thing. I've seen Red Dragon. Everybody pretty much says in unison that this one is a little bit better than Red Dragon. And Red Dragon's badass as far as I'm concerned. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Another Scream, um, Scream Factory release. Don't have a rating for it, obviously. A movie I just reviewed. The original Maniac. Now, somebody on Killer Flicks, DJ Castano, told me that he wanted me and Lee to review this. I took the challenge, bought this, bought the remake. Watch this one. It's a see it in, uh, on Netflix movie. You know, it, it's a very gritty, grimy, and dirty movie. For the right person, this is going to be an awesome horror addition to your collection. I'm certainly glad that I have it. It's got some, you know, some history to it. It was one of the first, like, really gritty and gory movies in the 80s. But it's so disturbing that it's a movie that I'll probably never watch again. So that's where it kind of gets dropped down a little bit in replay value. Maniac, the remake. I don't have a rating for this one because I haven't seen it in years. Don't remember hardly anything about it, but I'm really looking forward to checking this one out because this is one of those remakes that half the people say it's better than the original, half the people say it's good, but not as good as the original. So pretty much in unison, everybody says this is a good one. Another classic that I've not seen yet, but I bought it so I can rectify that. Night of the Living Dead. This is a really cool um, little, what the hell, what company is this? Criterion. I don't know, I wanted to say Arrow. I knew that was wrong. Criterion Collection release, really cool set. This is the one that started it all, as far as I'm concerned, like the, the George Romero zombie movies, which I've never really been a huge fan of, but I'm looking forward to checking out where it all started. So, Night of the Living Dead. This one I haven't even opened yet. The Prowler, another recommendation from Killer Flicks, which is basically piggybacking off of Maniac, another one of Tom Savini's movies where he does all the gore effects, and this one's supposed to be even more badass than Maniac, so looking forward to checking this one out. Silence of the Lambs, another Criterion release. This is a rebuy for me. I already have the other one, but this is a must-buy. I mean, Silence of the Lambs is just one of the greatest movies of all time, one of the greatest horror movies of all time. I mean, it's the horror movie that cleaned out the Oscars. So, I mean, the Silence of the Lambs is badass. Definitely go out and buy it. Love that movie. This was the first time watched for me. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Now we're getting into some of these movies from December. Um, I'd never seen it before. I've always been curious about it because I'm not really that experienced with like Christmas horror movies aside from Black Christmas and even that's like last year the first time I saw it. This was a seat on Netflix for me. There was some aspects of it that was really funny and really entertaining and interesting to watch. There were some other aspects that was really dated, really corny and just didn't quite have that so bad it's good element for me. It was just bad in some elements. And the weird thing about this Shot Factor release too, I watched the unrated version. They have extra scenes in the unrated version that they couldn't get a good enough print of, so you'll be watching like 1080p HD, and then all of a sudden it'll cut to a scene that looks like it's in 1990s, you know, shitty ass antenna television, and it's just so jarring to watch because it just it changes quality so much. So definitely watch the non, the actual rated version because for me that would just give me a headache. But it was a fun movie. I'm glad that I got this. I wish I didn't buy the super expensive version with the little um, <laughs> the toy, but. It was enjoyable enough. See it on Netflix. I cannot believe I've never seen this movie before. Stephen King's Silver Bullet. Another movie that my dad bought. I didn't realize there was a foreign release for it. And I had already kind of... I've known about this movie, but I've never seen it before. If I have seen pieces of it, that's about it. I don't remember anything else about it. And if I had seen this growing up, this would have been one of my favorite horror movies. One of my favorite werewolf movies. I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Definitely go out and buy it. It has that classic kind of 80s, not quite Goonies, but one of those feel-good kind of coming-of-age movies with horror elements thrown into it. So kind of a classic Stephen King setup. You know, if you've seen It, you kind of have those elements as well. But this was a really good werewolf movie, a really good horror movie. You got Corey Haim and you have Gary Busey. I mean, it, Corey Haim and Gary Busey versus a werewolf. Do I need to say any more? Go out and buy it. Another movie I need to rewatch because everybody jumps all over this movie, say it's so amazing. I don't remember it being that great. So I bought the Scream Factory release of The Strangers. Gonna watch this one in preparation for watching The Strangers Pray at Night or whatever the new one's gonna be. Don't have a rating for it, but very cool cover art. And I, I love those masks. I do remember loving those masks. It's very creepy. And the last one, as far as like classic stuff that I've bought, 
another classic movie that I've never seen before. And everybody at the time that I bought this on Killer Flicks was just jumping all over this movie, talking about how amazing it was. Suspiria, the Dario Argento classic. I like this movie. I didn't love it like everybody else did. This is a seat on Netflix for me. Don't unsubscribe. I'm sorry if I broke your heart, but look, it's a very cool, well-directed movie with a lot of style, a lot of color, very unique and interesting to watch. But some of the story elements and some of the reveals towards the end, by the time 2018 has come along, and it's no by no fault of this movie, it's my own fault for waiting so long to watch it, some of it was very predictable for me, and some of it didn't quite have this punch. Like when the movie ended, I was like, damn, that's it? So it was cool. I'll definitely give it a rewatch because I did enjoy this movie very much. Like it's on the high end of seeing it on Netflix. It's almost to go out and buy it, but I need to rewatch it because just what I was expecting wasn't quite what I got. So very cool release though. It took forever to get this thing. I bought it on eBay. It took like a month and a half, but very cool release. Now we're going to move on to the 4K double dips and then we'll move into the new releases and get the fuck out of here. All right. So. Pretty much everybody probably bought these, and that is the Nolan trilogy of Batman films. This came out, all of the Nolan movies got uh, released on 4K right when Dunkirk came out. I waited for these to go on sale because these were ridiculously priced. Like, the standard price for these movies was fucking outrageous, regardless how good they are. So I waited, got these for 20 bucks each. These are all great movies. Like, Batman Begins is my favorite. I know most people say The Dark Knight. I find The Dark Knight to be slightly overrated, as much as I love it. Um, but Batman Begins, to me, is a better overall movie. And I love The Dark Knight Rises, despite all of its flaws. So all three of these movies are go out and buy it for me. But very cool that they made it onto a good 4K release. Blade Runner, The Final Cut. I actually bought this right before I watched Blade Runner 2049 for the first time, because I've seen this movie before, and I did not like it. I was like, what is this? Everybody jumps all over this movie, says the like, sci-fi classic of a generation, and I just didn't get it. The second time I watched it, I got it. I enjoyed it. I still don't have like this huge love for it, like it's one of the greatest sci-fis of all time. Maybe by the time I watch it for the fourth time, because that's kind of the rule everybody says online, you gotta watch this movie four times and then you'll get it. But the second time, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. It's a very enjoyable movie. Definitely for the price that this was too, and getting the final cut on 4K, which looks awesome for being an older movie, it's a go out and buy it. So, very cool release. Going back to Nolan, Inception. Probably my favorite, uh, well, my second favorite Nolan movie actually. Uh, I love the action and the sci-fi in this movie. I'm actually gonna be doing a review for this very soon. I've, I've been putting it off for so long. I'm sorry, Al. Al Seward, one of my um, very good friends on YouTube and one of my uh, very dedicated patrons asked me to review this movie and I've been putting it off. It just keeps slipping my mind. But now that I got the 4K release, I will be rewatching it and reviewing this movie soon. So, not to spoil my review, but definitely go out and buy this mother. Jumanji! One of my favorite movies of my childhood. This is a very important movie to me, especially now that Robin Williams is gone. I mean, it's heartbreaking to watch this movie now. But this is the 4K release from Best Buy, so it looks like the board game. Could not pass this up. I mean, it, I love Jumanji so much. It's one of my favorite family movies. It's a great adventure movie. It's got some great comedy in it. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Robin Williams movies. So go out and buy this all day long, baby. Jumanji is awesome. The new one was pretty good, too. I didn't get a chance to review it, but it was enjoyable. My favorite Christopher Nolan movie, which does not get picked very often, The Prestige. I love The Prestige. The Prestige, to me, is the perfect Christopher Nolan movie because it has... Really good performances, it's got intrigue, it's very smartly written, smartly directed, smartly crafted, it keeps you guessing. It's got a lot of crazy stuff in here from, you know, portals and shit like that, to cloning and all this weird stuff, but this movie is just awesome. So definitely go out and buy this. I'm not gonna say anything more about it because usually I don't care about spoilers for older movies, but if you have not seen The Prestige, I'm not gonna spoil anything about it. So The Prestige, awesome. The Purge 3 Movie Collection. This was bought only because it was at a very good price. Because the first Purge is okay. The second Purge is the best. The third Purge to me was like a not quite as good version of the second one. So I enjoy these overall. I, I even enjoy the first one even though it's not nearly as good as the other two. But just a, a double dip to have some more horror 4K because we're still lacking seriously on the horror. I mean, get with it people. We got Get Out, we got this, and we got Split. I think that's about it. But double dipped on this because it was a good price. So I would say as far as individual ratings, Netflix for The Purge. Go out and buy it for The Purge Anarchy and Netflix for The Purge Election Year. 
Star Trek Beyond. I had the other two, wanted the third one, finally saw it at a good price. Enough said. Very good movie. It's probably my... It's my second favorite. I th I'll give this the slight edge over Into Darkness because upon rewatch, Into Darkness definitely falls flat in a few as aspects, but this is a very fun, cool, Star Trek-centric Star Trek movie. It doesn't feel like a Star Wars movie that's in Star Trek as much as I love that 2009 Star Trek. This one feels like it's straight out of the show, so I enjoy this a lot. This is a go out and buy it. <sighs> I forgot about this one. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. I will get this out of the way. Terminator 2 Judgment Day is one of my favorite movies of all time. One of the greatest sequels, one of the greatest, if not the greatest action movie of all time, except for Die Hard. But I can't say anything bad at all about this movie. It is flawless. My issue is not with the movie. The movies that go out and buy it all day long. The issue with me is this fucking shitty ass, half-assed 4K release. Now it might be a little extreme, but here's my beef. And we have this problem every single time we have like a format change. We went from fucking VHS to DVD, and went from DVD to Blu-ray. It happens every single time. There is a director's cut of this movie that is much more popular amongst fans than the theatrical cut. Much more popular. It's one of the best director's cuts of all time, right up there with Aliens. James Cameron has awesome director's cuts. Why the fuck is that not on this Blu-ray? It drives me absolutely insane. And nowhere online could you find the answer of whether or not it was on this Blu-ray or not. It doesn't say it on the fucking box. It doesn't say it on Amazon. It doesn't say it on anywhere else. So I had to buy this to find out the hard way that the director's cut is only on the Blu-ray, not the 4K Blu-ray. And that's the bullshit they do every single time. It happened from DVD to Blu-ray. Blu-ray would have the basic theatrical cut, but on the extra DVD disc, you would have the extended cut. That's such bullshit. If you're going to put all the time and energy into marketing this thing and getting everybody excited, give us both versions. It's ridiculous. So, rant over. This release, I would not say to go out and buy it. Even though it was cheap, I would wait for the actual, the better version that's going to have both of these movies on there because I prefer the director's cut much more to the theatrical cut. But, like I said, the movie itself is to go out and buy it. And the last one, Van Helsing. Now, I've always enjoyed this movie. I know there's people who absolutely hate this and say it was absolutely garbage and one of the worst movies ever made. I've never understood that. I think this is a very cool, little interesting popcorn movie with the classic Universal Monsters. I've always had fun with it. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but I've always enjoyed it. I really enjoy Hugh Jackman and the role of Van Helsing. I wish we would have gotten a sequel, to be honest with you. So I'm going to say go out and buy it, even though everybody's going to hate me for saying that. Look it. I like this movie. Go out and buy it. Now we are on to the new releases. Holy crap, this is a long ass video. All right, guys. I'm going to divide this into two stacks because there's quite a bit. <laughs> All right. Starting off with American Assassin. This movie was badass. I actually, after I got done with this, I had to go back and watch and read some reviews to figure out what everybody's issue with this because this movie got a resounding meh upon release. And this was a badass, gritty, kick ass action movie. Really good performances. I mean, you got um, Dylan O'Brien totally commanding that role. Like, he's one of those guys where, like, damn, put him in some more action movies because he's kick ass. Michael Keaton is great. Uh, even Taylor Kitsch as the villain was really good. So, this was a movie that I enjoyed thoroughly. It's one of those kind of throwbacks to old classic gritty action movies. So, I enjoy the hell out of it. This is a go out and buy it for me. You heard it here first. One that I haven't had a chance to watch yet, American Made. I've heard very good things about it. Tom Cruise is much more hit than he is Miss, so I put my money down and put a little gamble on this one. Don't have a rating for it, obviously, but if you've seen it, let me know down below if you like it. Better Watch Out. This was a surprise for me. I bought this around Christmas time. It came out around the same time as The Babysitter. It was getting a lot of comparisons. I much prefer The Babysitter to this movie, but this is a very enjoyable horror comedy. Uh, it's very unexpected the way that this movie goes along. I'm not going to say anything else about it, but it has a very, very nice kind of turn of events in it. So I would say go out and buy it, especially for the price this was. It's worth watching. It's got some crazy shit in it. So you better watch out. Very cool. Blade Runner 2049. Didn't get a chance to see this in theaters. Didn't really have an interest in seeing it in theaters because I wasn't a big fan of the first one. This is a seat on Netflix for me. Now, keep in mind, just like the original Blade Runner, I probably will rewatch this again and suddenly I'll like it uh, much more in the way that everybody else seems to like this movie. But to me, this was a very well shot movie, like gorgeous visuals, like definitely the best looking movie this year, which he actually just won uh, Roger Deakins. So good job. But uh, hopefully it's Roger. I know it's Deakins. <laughs> but, uh, 
anyway, I enjoyed it, but the story to me was a little lackluster. I saw where it was going a mile away. It didn't really grab me by the throat like some of the, uh, the themes that the first one did. And I know I'm among the very minority of this movie because everybody else loves this thing. But like I said, upon second watch, I'll probably like it a little bit more. Brawl in Cell Block 99. This was in my top five of last year. This is a badass movie, very unexpected. Vince Vaughn at his best. Like, this is a role that is going to be like the highlight of his career, in my opinion. Like, and I want to see more like this. He's going to be in this director's next movie called Dragged Across Concrete with the great Mel Gibson. So hopefully that's even more badass than this, but this is a go out and buy it all day long. I'm not going to tell you much about the story because the, the actual plot of the movie doesn't even get going until after an hour into the movie. It's just a very different, unique movie that is very gritty, bloody, and unexpected. So check this out, please. Go out and buy it. Coco! Haven't had a chance to watch it yet. My girlfriend loved it. Kids loved it. They said that it was incredible. It just won Best Animated Picture at the Oscars. Pixar is... I mean, they're all hit pretty much except for the Cars movies as far as I'm concerned. So definitely a safe bet buying this. Had no rating for it, but I look forward to checking it out. Detroit, extremely difficult movie to watch. Um, I would say quality-wise, it's definitely go out and buy it, though. Uh, it's a movie that I'm probably not going to re-watch very often if I ever do, um, but I liked it enough to buy it. I saw it in theaters. It's a very difficult story to get through. It's a very brutal and, you know, gut-wrenching movie with some of the directions that it takes, but just powerhouse performances all across the board, very good direction, so got to check out Detroit. And I'm surprised that that wasn't anywhere at the Oscars. I would say that. The Foreigner, having the same argument that I had with American Assassin. I watched this and I had to go back and look at reviews and figure out what the hell people's deal was with this because this was a badass movie. It was a little bit mismarketed because Jackie Chan's role is very small and it's not like, this is not like Taken with Jackie Chan the way that they advertise it. Pierce Brosnan is much more the main character. But this is a very cool, gritty, political thriller with some awesome action and a great performance from Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan is at the top of his game since he's done James Bond so have nothing negative to say about this maybe it was a little bit slow in some spots but it's a political thriller you got aspects of that so I enjoyed the hell out of this go out and buy it all right got about 10 more and we're done happy death day you saw my review you know I love this movie didn't expect shit from it but I enjoyed the hell out of it this is a go out and buy it very fun movie I wish it would have been rated R. If this would have been bloody and gory and rated R and had like Final Destination style deaths, this would have been like one of my top three or four of the year. Honestly, it was that enjoyable for me. Very cool, very fun movie. So go out and buy it. Hellraiser Judgment. I've only seen the first four Hellraiser movies. I only liked the first Hellraiser movie. I think the rest of them have been pretty terrible and I haven't even watched the worst of them. This is another bad Hellraiser movie. I've had people say that it's a step in the right direction. Maybe I would say that if I've watched the garbage of the Hellraiser franchise, but standing where I am now, this is not a good movie. This is just a watered down version of Seven as far as the style of this detective story with some gritty, grimy looks to it that just happens to have Pinhead and everybody shoehorned into it. There's a character called the Auditor that is a very cool addition that I thought that that was visually, it was a very cool character and some of the actual judgment stuff at the beginning was cool, but overall this is a movie that I will probably never watch again. Did not enjoy it. And the guy who plays Pinhead in this, I don't know how bad the last guy was, but this guy has no charisma whatsoever. So Doug Bradley left some gigantic shoes to fill and they are not filled yet. So skip that one. Stephen King's It. I almost didn't buy this because they have a director's cut coming out sometime this year and I hate when they advertise the director's cut before they even put out the regular one and why they didn't just put it out at once. I can't stand that just like when they did with X-Men Days of Future Past, but I'm a whore. I bought it because I wanted the steelbook and I wanted to watch it again. Go out and buy it. You've seen my review. This is an awesome movie. I still think that um, Tim Curry's performance is a little bit more effective for me personally than Bill Skarsgård, but he's very good. And it's just a really enjoyable movie. It's a great coming of age and a great horror movie. Can't say anything more about it. It is awesome. Kingsman, The Golden Circle. This is a very disappointing sequel. I was shocked at how many people said that this was a bad sequel because Matthew Vaughn has done no wrong you know, as far as I'm concerned. I've enjoyed all of his movies. I think that his X-Men first class movie is a little bit overrated, but I really enjoyed the first movie. This one just seems like it makes all the wrong moves. It goes weird and gritty in spots where it doesn't need to be and kind of takes away from some of the fun of it 
it kills off characters that should have kept alive. It brings back characters that should have stayed dead. Just a very uneven movie that honestly pales in comparison to the first one. I'll say see it on Netflix because there's still some entertainment to be had here, but way huge drop off from the first movie. Leatherface. Very divisive sequel. Some people hate it. Some people really liked it. I'm on the really like it end. I thought this was a really cool sequel. I thought that the mystery aspect of who was going to become Leatherface was not much of a mystery, but the aspect of that storytelling I thought was cool. I thought that, you know, the griminess and the bloodiness of this was neat. It was like a Devil's Rejects kind of road movie, but I enjoyed it. Although I will say that if you buy the Blu-ray, it totally spoils who's going to be Leatherface on the side cover because it's got his face right there. But... We've seen that happen numerous times where the Blu-ray cover totally fucks this, the twists in the story. But uh, I will say it's a see it on Netflix. Because it, it's a good movie, in my opinion. It's not like an awesome movie. It's middle-of-the-road Texas Chainsaw. Mayhem. This was badass. I expected... I don't know what I expected with this. The only reason I bought it, to be honest with you, is because Samara Weaving was on the cover. And she was incredible in The Babysitter in many ways. So this is a very, very cool horror comedy. This is like what I expected the Belko experiment to be times 10. It's just insanity. This is a go out and buy it. A ton of fun. A lot of gore. Samara Weaving is awesome in this. You got Steven Yen from Walking Dead being awesome as well. Very cool movie. So check that one out. My pick of the month, Last Flag Flying. This movie is incredible, people. I had not seen this in theaters, if it even had a theatrical release. I passed the Blu-ray on, I think, Best Buy, saw the three actors who were on the cover and said, I'm going to give it a shot. Most of these movies that kind of float under the radar that have really good casts on the cover oftentimes end up being disappointing. This was anything but. This, is, this would have been in my top ten of the year last year had I seen it. Brian Cranston, um, Steve Carell, and Lawrence Fishburne are incredible. They play off each other very well. It tells the story of Steve Carell's son dying in the Iraq War. Gets sent back. He finds out that the details of his son's death was a fabricated lie by the government. Gets pissed off and says that he's taking his son's body back home. He's not burying him in Arlington. And it's a road trip movie where these three ex-Marines who are kind of estranged from each other find their friendship again in the midst of tragedy, taking this guy's body back to um, Steve Carell's home. Brian Cranston is awesome. It's the Brian Cranston that I love. He's kind of the loose cannon of the group. Steve Carell is very understated, and he has some of the emotional scenes, and he's very good, but he has some com comedy in here, too. Lawrence Fishburne almost steals the movie, though. As much as I love Brian Cranston, because Lawrence Fishburne is a preacher in this that's kind of given up all the ways of war and all that kind of stuff, and there's times when he gets pissed off, and he just lets loose, like, oh, motherfucker, cocker. and he's hilarious in those scenes, so I cannot recommend this movie enough. It was one of the best things that I've seen in months, and it would have been in my top ten of last year, so go out and buy it. Pick of the month. Mom and Dad. This was a fun little surprise. Nicolas Cage is the Nicolas Cage that you want to see in a movie like this. Um, Selma Blair is very good. This basically tells the story of there's like a viral outbreak that switches off that genome or whatever you want to call it, the the message in parents heads that tell them you need to take care of this child no matter what and protect them it switches it and says you need to kill those little motherfuckers so all the parents in the world basically start going to murder their kids and it's just a crazy little horror movie with some comedic elements it's a lot of fun it's very it's not quite as gory as i wanted it to be but i just i want everything to be gory but um, it was a lot of fun. Nicolas Cage was a lot of fun. He definitely makes the movie in some aspects because he's that unhinged, like, meme-worthy Nicolas Cage. I would say go out and buy it. This was a lot of fun, and especially for the price, this is worth having. Very unique horror movie. Haven't had a chance to watch this yet. Murder on the Orient Express. I like murder mysteries. I thought this was going to be good. Didn't get a chance to see it in theaters. Picked it up. I have no rating for it. Stronger. This was a really good movie. Um, it kind of... It's like a true story about the guy who, one of the guys that lost uh, his legs in the Boston Marathon bombing. I honestly don't remember if he was like the one, it's Jeff Bowman, if he was like the one that got the most media attention or not. But this movie focuses on him and his relationship with Tatiana Maslany, who I love from Orphan Black, and just kind of him recovering and getting back into life after this tragedy. Jake Gyllenhaal is really good. Tatiana is very, very good. Uh, it's a really emotional movie that, you know, it didn't quite, like, knock my socks off, but I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to say see it on Netflix because it's not going to be for everybody. Some people are going to think it's a little bit slow. Some people are going to think that it sticks a little bit too much to true story. It doesn't, you know, doesn't provide enough movie 
moments in there, but you know, it's one of those true stories that you have to kind of be a little careful with. You don't want to put too much fiction in there, so I get it, but I enjoyed it very much. So check that one out on Netflix when it comes. Three billboards over Ebbing, Missouri, or sorry, outside Ebbing, Missouri. I don't know why I said over. This was one of my favorite movies of last year. Didn't really expect anything because I didn't hear anything about it. All of a sudden it was released. Everybody was talking about it. Finally got a chance to see it in theaters and I loved it. I thought the performances were awesome. I thought the story and the screenplay should have won best, um, best screenplay at the Oscars in my opinion. Fucking get out. But um, Frances McDormand, no question why she won her Best Actress because she's awesome. Sam Rockwell, no question why he won Best Supporting Actor because he's awesome. He has one of the best character arcs that I've seen in movies too where he completely changes throughout the movie and it's a very difficult character to do that with and they pull it off. So this was incredible. I'm not going to say anything more about it because there's a lot of good story elements I don't want to spoil, but this is absolutely a go out and buy it. This was in my top three or four of last year, I believe, so check this one out. Two more people. Victor Crowley. I still need to do my Hatchet 3 review, and then this one will be coming very soon. Uh, let me say, what can I say about this movie? Um, it fucking sucks. I bought it because it was $11, because it had some buzz around it about being a really cool sequel. I liked Hatchet 1, did not like Hatchet 2 at all. Somewhat enjoyed Hatchet 3, I figured maybe this one would be closer to 1. This is terrible. This is a hatchet movie which is already kind of low budget and scaled down and it's in one location the entire movie a crash plane the acting is garbage it has one good kill where felissa rose gets killed beyond that this movie is trash there's a bullshit way that victor crowley gets resurrected it throws out all the rules of the previous movies as far as how to kill victor crowley um, some of the characters are absolutely ridiculous. It, it's I didn't enjoy this at all. So I don't. It's not as bad as Hatchet 2 because Hatchet 2 just annoyed the fuck out of me. But it's damn close. So this is a skip it bordering on fuck this movie. Not even worth eleven dollars. Last one. Haven't had a chance to see this yet. Wonder. Uh, heard a lot of really good things about it. Kind of wanted to get a feel good movie. Picked it up. Haven't had a chance to see it yet. Don't have a rating. Sorry. That's all of them. Yes. Big ass pile done with. All right, guys, if you want to check out any of these movies, please, I'll try to provide an Amazon affiliate link where you can go to Amazon through my, I'm not gonna do for every individual movie, but I'll provide a link down below where you can click it. It'll open up the amazon.com homepage and any of these movies or anything that you buy on Amazon, if you use the link that I provide, I'll actually get a kickback for it. It's a good way to help this channel out. Beyond that, just check out these movies that I told you to check out. We had some damn good releases over the past three months. And uh, I will be back next month. I'm not going to put this um, video series off again like I did. I just kind of lost track of it and changing jobs and everything. But hopefully you enjoyed the return of Off the Shelves. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you want to check out some of my social media links, check the video description below for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and Spreadshirt, where I have brand new Cody Leach t-shirts and a bunch of other shit you can have. Hoodies, you can have tank tops, you can have coffee mugs, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Very cool designs, so check that out, guys. And if you want to check out some more of my videos, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.